The story of a young woman being kicked out of a campaign rally has the federal conservatives being criticized for running a campaign that is too controlling and too secretive. We're going to open up the phone lines and ask you whether or not you agree that they are being too secretive, too controlling, or if you think this whole thing is being blown way out of proportion. Open lines on that later on this hour. But first, talking federal politics, we're joined in studio by Randall Garrison. He's the Esquimalt Juan de Fuca NDP candidate. Randall, thanks so much for coming in today. Well, thanks, Adam, for the invitation. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you the question. We're going to be asking our, our listeners later on this hour. A story of a young woman kicked out of a campaign rally as the federal conservatives being criticized for running a campaign that is too controlling and too secretive. Just a little bit of background. Uh, the young woman, she's 19 years old, never voted before been going to different rallies around ontario or around where she lives seeing the different leaders uh, she had gone to a liberal rally with michael ignatiev had a picture taken with him put that on her facebook wall well it turns out the conservatives do background checks on everybody who registers to come to one of their political rallies they found the picture of michael ignatiev on her facebook wall and they told her she was no longer welcome ripped up her name tag kicked her out of the building we're going to be asking if you think that's too controlling or too secretive on the phone lines randall what do you think well we do it a different way uh, jack layton's going to be here thursday at six o'clock at yeah, well, where can i sign up for a background check well jack's going to be here and it's open to everybody and I think people have to come early uh, in order to get in, but there won't be any vetting of who's coming into the meeting. Jack loves to meet people, loves to answer their questions. So it's going to be wide open, and uh, we hope to see a lot of people there. So even if someone has had their picture taken with Stephen Harper in the past, <laughs> and they attend your rally with Jack Layton, you're, you're pledging right here that those people will not be kicked out. I'd call them a convert. I'd be happy to shake their hand. <laughs> Thanks so much. So, Randall, you're, you're the first vote in that we're going to get on that. We're also going to do open lines on that later on this hour, and I know we'll open up our phone lines in a little while and get some feedback from our listeners, any questions or comments for you. But first of all, give us uh, an update of how your campaign's going. You've got a very uh, well-known opponent. He's been out there in the public troy de souza he's always holding these these rally burma shave type events out of the mckenzie overpass the signs are all over the place would you say that he is your chief uh, your chief competition in this race i do think it'll come down to a two-way race in the end between uh troy de souza and myself uh we have a different approach to campaigning mm -hmm. uh, i spend my time actually talking to voters uh, on the phone and at the doorstep and we're also going to be very dependent on a very uh, large volunteer campaign which is already well underway and we're going to work really hard to uh talk to people about what their concerns are and help them uh, answer those questions and get out to the polls and vote. Now, I'm just going off of memory here, but this isn't the first time that you've run against Troy D'Souza. You ran against him in 2006 as yes, well, correct? Yes, in 2006, that's correct. Who got more votes that time? Or well, I, I did finish ahead of him that time, and okay. uh, I have joked that I plan to do that again. So there is a little bit of precedence here. I just want to There is. That uh, there. Both of us uh, finished uh, close second to Keith Martin, and of course, Keith was a phenomena, a well-respected politician, elected many times, and with him out of the race, it is an open seat. And we're going to give it all we've got. Well, I think Keith ran for just about every party in the spectrum in that riding. I, I guess he was. Well, he I, was, I did joke with him that yeah. I already had the NDP nomination in 2006, <laughs> so it was too late. Yeah. yeah, he was. I guess he was Reform. He was Alliance. Uh, Democratic he, Alliance. Then he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and then he was the Independent, and then he was the Federal Liberal. And uh, was he ever actually a Federal Conservative, or did he leave before they changed the party? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know, and it didn't really matter with Keith. Keith was his own man, and I think that's what people liked. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that, the idea of running as one's own person instead of being part of a, a, a brand or a party. What part of that argument do you find yourself on? Well, I don't think it's a dichotomy. I, I think you have to be your own person. I think you have to be a representative for the constituency, and I think you have to be able to work in a team. And the person who can do all three of those is the most successful MP. And I know Keith, when he retired, expressed his frustration because he was missing yes. that last part, was finding a team he could work with. Mm -hmm. He did. Looking at the federal polls, what we've seen since the election campaign started, we've seen the Liberals actually gain support uh, seemingly at the expense of the NDP. Michael Ignatieff is being very uh, vocal about his party's messaging, saying that the only way way to defeat Stephen Harper. For those voters out there who don't want Stephen Harper as Prime Minister, the only way to do that is to vote NDP. How is your urge, excuse me, to vote Liberal instead of NDP? How is your party combating that message? Well, I think there's a couple things wrong with it. One is that this country is strongly regionalized, and so no matter what's happening at that broad national level in the polls, something different is usually going on here in British Columbia. And what is the rule is that in British Columbia, it's New Democrats who beat Conservatives. And with Keith Martin no longer in the race, I think we're going to revert to that pattern here. It's New Democrats who are going to stop the Conservatives. Let's take a quick break and open up the phone lines if you have a question or a comment for Randall Garrison. Also, Jack Layton's going to be in Victoria. That's coming up later on this week. We're going to talk about that as well. Also, open up the phone lines, take your questions or comments. We're back in just a moment. 250-386-1161-STAR-1070 on CFAX 1070. Taking your calls for Randall Garrison, Esquire.
Climb out one to Fuca NDP candidate two five zero three eight six one one six one star ten seventy four clear phone lines. Ron's been waiting patiently. Ron, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, folks. Uh, the conservative candidate for Esquimo, when he was on CFAX, uh, said to me that the HST was a provincial issue. I, I don't really think it is, but when I looked it up, I found out that the Green Party, the Liberals, and the Conservatives all support the imposition of the HST, so I want clarification in terms of your stand. But secondly, he said that if we vote for him, we'd get a McKenzie overpass. If we vote for him, will we also get a free pony? <laughs> well, thanks, Rod. Two good questions there. Uh, on the HST, I guess the question I ask people is, whose idea was it in the middle of recession to harmonize uh, the sales tax here in British Columbia? And that was the Conservatives who approached the Liberal government. So they're both responsible for this. And in the House of Commons, both Liberals and Conservatives voted for it, even though some of their candidates in this election are trying to back away from it. Uh, but I know some of their senior staff have said, well, it's a provincial matter now because we think it's a really good idea. Well, and I, I'm glad that, that Ron reminded me of that because Troy D'Souza said that to Ron actually on my show. It was, it was, uh, and I, I remember that conversation very well. And I asked Troy D'Souza a question. I'll ask you the same question to be fair. Um, we know that there was at least a federal component to the HST because there was a vote required in the House of Commons. And it was a vote that Michael Ignatieff whipped his caucus to take part in and vote in favor of the HST. That was a vote that Keith Martin said, forget it, and he just didn't show up. That's right. He, he was whipped to vote against it, and he said, no, I'm representing my constituents. I don't give a damn what the party leader says. Of course, I'm paraphrasing here. And he didn't show up to the vote. I asked Troy D'Souza, would you defy your party leader and not show up to a vote if it represented your constituents like Keith Martin did? Troy D'Souza refused to answer that question. He refused to say whether or not he would defy Stephen Harper openly. Would you defy Jack Layton openly? like Keith Martin did his own leader, if it was representing your constituents? On a question of principle, absolutely. Absolutely. So you don't have a problem saying that? Because uh, absolutely. Is, on a question, question of principle, because the NDP lets its caucus members on matters of principle vote freely. And so we've seen votes in the House of Commons where New Democrats have represented their constituencies and have split on quite difficult issues. On questions of regular everyday policy, I'm a New Democrat. I'm unlikely to disagree mm -hmm. in, a, in a party that I've worked in for years and that I've... Uh, that I've run for, I've decided to be a candidate for. But absolutely, on a question of principle affecting my riding, absolutely. It's so nice when politicians actually answer the simple question. I just see, no, as a guy who asks questions all day, I really do appreciate that. So thank you. And I'm sure that there's people out there also saying thank you right now to that. Um, what are some of the big issues that you're hearing on the doorstep these days? Well, the big issues on the doorstep are clearly affordability and pocketbook issues. Uh, in this recession, uh, which the conservatives say is now over and everything's fine again, uh, I don't find that at the doorstep. People find life's getting harder and harder every day. Uh, those who are working now are worried about their retirements, and that's one of the reasons Jack Layton's been talking about how we protect and improve pensions for those who are working right now. I meet a lot of seniors who are just getting by on the GIS. Um, mm -hmm. Again, in the House of Commons, Jack Layton asked the conservatives to lift all seniors out of poverty. Uh, they made a token gesture in their budget, but they wouldn't commit to that. And young families. Young families have some big concerns, especially uh, in a riding like Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca, where there's been a lot of new family housing built. Uh, the services that go with that in terms of child care in particular haven't followed. So people have a real challenge in finding affordable and quality child care places. Now, the Conservatives and the other parties tend to have a very different way of dealing with problems like that. The Conservatives dealt with the child care issue through the child care tax credit. Why, in your opinion, is that not good enough? Well, the Conservatives dealt with it that way so they could put the issue to rest. It didn't build a single space for a child anywhere in the country. And the problem, uh, $100 a month, of course, won't pay for a space. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the more than 900 a month. But, yeah. but the problem really is the existence of those spaces in Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca. So we need the federal government to step up and help uh, take the first steps toward eventually a universal public child care system. We welcome your comments, 250-386-1161, or questions, and on a cell line. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I would just like to ask the candidate uh, about his uh, stand on the military pensions and the abolishment of the clawback. Well, this week we actually uh, had a release from our national leader, uh, and I've also done some work myself locally on this issue. So we're pledged to do away with the clawback on pensions. Uh, we're pledged to restore the long-term support uh, for veterans who have disabilities instead of trying to wash our hands of them with a lump sum payment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really very concerned 
after we send people out uh, to do work for us, which risks their lives and risks their futures, that we follow up when they get home with adequate supports that really respect the uh, contribution they've made to our country. Ed, thanks so much for that question. 250-386-1161, star 1070, a free call on your wireless device. Let's move on to Steve. Steve, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, thanks for having uh, taking my call. Uh, really concerned about Aboriginal issues across the country, uh, and of course, in particular, uh, here in British Columbia. I'm wondering what uh, our candidate for the uh, New Democratic Party, uh, what, their, what their process or platform is in reference to uh, uh, First Nations issues across the country, uh, particular uh, treaty issues, uh, unresolved issues at the federal level, uh, provincial level, uh, level as well. Uh, we've only had a couple of treaties that have gone through in the last 13 years. Yes. Obviously, I'm asking simply because uh, of the socioeconomic conditions that we've had to continue, continually deal with and uh, with no real solutions. So I'm wondering what our, uh, our candidate has to say about that. Thank you very much for the question, Steve. Randall Garrison, Aboriginal Issues. Well, obviously quite important locally. Uh, we are getting close to one tree settlement here in the riding, and I think that's a very positive thing that will provide opportunities not only for Aboriginal people, but for those who do business with them and for those who are concerned about social problems in our community. When First Nations have their resources and their lands that they need to make progress, it'll make life better for all of us uh, in this riding. I was particularly disappointed when the uh, Conservatives came to power and they tore up the Kelowna Accord, which was a comprehensive attempt to address all those many social and economic problems that First Nations people face. So we're pledged to work with those communities to get the resources they need to help them build back their self-sufficiency. Do you think that we'll ever get all the issues resolved with, with respect to First Nations and the admitted wrongs that have been committed against their peoples in the past? Do you think that we'll ever see full resolution in any of our lifetimes? Well, I think the most important step is resolution of treaty issues locally. And once we do that, then we can start to work on some of the other partnership uh, ideas that all of us have. But until we get the treaty settled, uh, we're at a stalled spot in our relationships. Okay, uh, a couple of minutes left. Any more calls? 250-386-1161. Clear phone lines right now. You can get uh, right through to have your question asked. Jack Layton coming to town later on this week. Tell us about that. Uh, that's right. Thursday night, 6 o'clock, Squimalt High School. Open to everybody. Everyone welcome. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be a, quite a big rally, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really plowed, proud to be a member of Jack Layton's team. Uh, he led the caucus that actually held the government to account in the last parliament. Uh, and he also demonstrated that New Democrats have the ability to work with all the parties uh, to get legislation through the House of Commons. Unfortunately, some of that legislation, uh, particularly Climate Change Act and also the bill to provide HIV drugs to Africa, uh, was stalled in the Conservative Senate and had no prospect of getting through. So Jack Layton, for me, is a leader you can trust to get things done on those very important issues. I want to ask you about another issue that Prime Minister Harper has, has uh, brought up, resurrected, if you will. It has been dealt with in the past in a private member's bill that failed to pass the House. I'm talking about the federal long gun registry, certainly an issue that resonates in your writing. Prime Minister Harper pledging to abolish it once and for all if he or if his uh, party is elected to a majority government. What do you think of that? Well, the first thing I want to say is that, that uh, Harper is always looking to divide Canadians and get an advantage out of that division. And that's what's most disappointing to me about his leadership. He looks for that uh, one thing that will fracture us that he can take advantage of. Uh, I've always said, uh, I teach criminal justice, I've worked a lot with police, that I'm a firm supporter of the gun registry because the police themselves support the gun registry. We have time for one more call. Let's go to Joanne and Victoria. Joanne, you're our last call. Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to bring it to the attention that um, these people that were heavily scrutinized and, and uh, at the rally, that was to get in to see the Prime Minister, who yes. has protected. The other the other uh, people are, are leaders of parties or some aren't even that. So the uh, the security to be around the Prime Minister is as it should be. So you believe that if somebody has a picture of Michael Ignatieff on their Facebook wall, they should not be allowed in the same room as the Prime Minister, is what you're saying? Um, I'm not saying that, how do you know that's the reason they weren't... Because um, that's what they said the reason was. The party has since said that it made a mistake. Um, okay, but anyway, I, I am very comfortable with security issues around the Prime Minister. We'll okay. have to look at Fair enough, Joanne. Thanks so much for the comment. Randall? See, I, I would agree with you, Joanne, that security uh, around the leaders of the parties is quite important, and the RCMP is responsible for that. This was not action by the RCMP over security issues. This was action that the Conservatives have taken at every single event the Prime Minister's appeared at. He exists in a bubble. He's not allowed to have people who might disagree with him in the same room. And uh, I think it's a disgraceful way to campaign in a democracy. 